Hey folks, uh, it's Lucid, and uh, we're going to be doing a quick channel update here. Um, most of you might have noticed that uh, the upload frequency has slowed a bit, um, and uh, the new games that are starting off, uh, I'm casting it, I'm not really playing it. And uh, I'm going to talk about that, we're going to do a bit of a channel update, and talk about kind of the reasons why. Uh, I haven't, I kind of, the changes have been kind of in effect for a while, uh, and I've delayed talking about it. I've hinted at it maybe at times, but I've delayed talking about it. And that's because I wanted to kind of feel it out and see how I felt about it. I didn't want to do anything too drastic, but like, you know, the tournament uh, this year, uh, I wasn't too involved in hosting. I mean, I announced it and stuff, but Kirby's been doing most of the work for uh, kind of administrating it and things like that. So, um... Yeah, let me, let me talk about this. So, the first thing I want to say is uh, the, the immediate events uh, that, that caused it were basically that I got 4v1 coalitioned uh, in a game, and it happened really early, and the players wouldn't even diplomacy with me. Uh, it, was actually a, it was actually a 3v1 coalition, and then a... Uh, and then it was a separate 1v1. But the people in the... Th the 1v1 person, he fought me even though he was losing a war over somebody else and I had very generous peace terms and it would have made sense for both of us to peace out. But instead, he just fought me for the hell of it because I had poked him and then asked for peace. And that was annoying. And then the 3v1 coalition, they wouldn't even talk to me in terms of diplomacy unless they voted as a tripartite unit. And this was my first war. So uh, I did poke the guy in the 1v1. So I initiated this, but then offered him peace the same turn because I realized that wasn't going to be a good idea. And I did poke one of the members of a 3v1 coalition, but they were those three people were involved in fighting another nation. And I just thought I would help the people that they were dogpiling. Uh, those low-life scum. Uh, anyhow, um, yeah, that uh, that happened, and uh, yeah, couldn't diplomacy out of that. Uh, and also, this was probably the highest skilled game I was in. There were a lot of really good players in that game, uh, and so in no way was there like a need to coalition me. Uh, I wasn't a particularly good player. Um, not that this happening didn't make me, like, quit, but I, I'm going to explain all the things that it led to. Um, first thing is, I, I think I should just say, there's some irony in this happening after the Bogarus game, where we coalitioned Arco because of who he was. Um, that said, it was only a 2v1, um, and I was open to diploing with Arco the whole time. Um, I didn't want to leave TNG uh, stranded, but... Um, I was open to peace terms, and if he, you know, I wasn't really fight like committed to fighting and killing him. If he gave like a severe blow to T and Chi, and T and Chi wanted to peace out, I was going to be happy doing that. Um, so anyway, you know, I, I wasn't a huge dick in that, but there's definitely some irony in that we were trying to put together a three v one coalition there. Um, and it's kind of shitty. Uh, it's kind of shitty. Uh, to, to play in a game. I, you know, it's it's also happened in some of the games I've cast. Somebody gets 3v1 or 4v1, and it's just like they want to give up. I'll, I'll point out in this game, I fought off everybody in the 4v1. Uh, this guy died an inglorious death, and I got some of his lands. Uh, one of the guys, like, all in me with his entire thug army. We killed almost all the thugs. Um, just a tremendous amount of stuff. And he was on the clock. He was playing Death One or Death Three Iru, which was kind of hilarious and cool. It was a very cool build, but uh, but yeah, he then tried to throne rush afterwards and failed. Um, but yeah, we he he died. I think uh, after I subbed out, we ended up getting his capital. Um, I think Chris Lighthawk was another guy coalitioning me. Uh, we killed a huge stack of his. I think we got the fort back he took from us. And then Hezekia, who is never to be trusted uh, in any game. Uh, yeah, he... Uh, yeah, I th we basically killed a ton of his shit, too. So, uh, it was painful. It cost us a tremendous amount, but we survived. Uh, anyhow, the important point... I did, this is the backdrop. I was going to put this series up. I was so salty during the series. I, 
Some of you guys think I like being salty. I don't, guys. That, so that's the first thing. I was in such a bad mood while all this was happening. Like, such a bad mood. It's almost unbelievable how bad of a mood I was in. Um, and the thing was, was that it made me play better, too. Like, I was so pissed off and frustrated. I would spend half the day, if I thought anything, I would come back to my computer and futz with the turn for a little bit. You know, I thought, oh, I could probably kill a thug if it comes here if I do this or something like that. And it worked. I mean, we defended it, right? Like, that, all that salt we fueled into just a rather epic defense. And it would be a cool game to show you guys in that way. But all my recordings of it are so freaking angry. I am just so bitter and salty about the whole damn thing. Um, and I don't like being like that. I, you know, I, I get salty in some of my games because I care, right? But, um... I don't like being like that. And it it wasn't only like the recordings were just tainted by me being like bitter and upset. My real life was tainted, guys. Like, like it sucked. I couldn't, I was like thinking about it while I was going to sleep. I was thinking about it while I was in the shower. And it wasn't just thinking about all the moves for a turn. I was like stewing over how I didn't like the players, how like there's no honor in a zero diplomacy 3v1 early coalition. Um, I was thinking about how this guy is just suicide packing me down I, and it was making me super bitter. Um, so it, but it was, it was like extreme guys. Like I, it was affecting the ins and outs every moment of my life just about. And when that happened, I was like, okay, we need to take a step back. Um, I already kind of know that like, I don't know, I have other things I wanted to do in my life that this was kind of like getting in the way of. And what this made me realize is that um, basically this was draining all of my emotional energy. Um, and not only was it draining all of my emotional energy, it was draining all of my free uh, spare like brain cycles. Like I was draining all my daydreaming energy right? All my spare CPU cycles. And uh, this is kind of a big deal. This is kind of a big deal. Like, this is the stuff that if you want to be like an independent driven person, you need emotional energy to do hard tasks and you need to be able to daydream and get inspired and excited about the other things in your life. And I realized that this wasn't just like, it's not like just this event was doing it. I would get like all the times when I'm getting like obsessed about the game and salty and this, that, or the other, you know, it's draining. It just hadn't been to this magnitude before until this particular game. Uh, but sure, it had been, I mean, I can totally remember like relationships I had been in and I was, you know, I wouldn't like be mean to somebody I was with, but they, I was affected, you know, like they could tell something was wrong with me. Um... So, yeah, it just wasn't cool. It's not, a, it wasn't the good balance. I was too invested. Um, so that's kind of not cool. And it, you know, it also sucks. I think when people know you and I, you know, I'm sh like, I mean, it's, it kind of sucks being coalitioned in general, like because of who you are. Uh, and that can be justified, you know, like, I would say it was, I felt more justified when doing it to Arco because he had like nap broken against me and he's probably a better player than me too. But um, it it sucks even when it isn't justified. Or, you know, it sucks when it is and when it isn't justified. It doesn't matter. It sucks being like, there's a difference between like a dog pile when people just jump on you in the early game because they can or they want to or they're scared of you. And then like a coalition... So I guess coalitioned isn't the right word. It's really dogpiled because of who you are. Because coalitioned, like if you are running away with the game and you people gang up to attack you, that is way different than people just jumping on you. Um, and like some people had left comments in the video that I really liked that were like, you know, you shouldn't be playing in a game with somebody. If you're so scared of them being in the game, you're going to attack them just because of who they are. And I agree with that. Um, we've also, because of this, we've come up with a, a separate map, um, which you'll be seeing going up on the channel, but it's like an anti-dog pile map. Um, and there's a few, I, I drafted a version because other people were happy to, um, to talk about different ideas for it, but they didn't want to put in the sweat, blood, and tears to make one. So I made one, 
uh, which some of these games that will be coming up on the channel are going to have this on it, but I'm not going to be in those games. I'll be casting those. Um, and the reason I'm going to be casting is because I've decided that until I get other parts of my life in order, like things, until I start making some of the big steps for which I'm going to be needing a lot of my emotional energy, uh, a lot of my dreaming, like daydreaming energy, uh, until I get those things kind of more progressed. And, and some of that is I really need to get back on top of I, that uh, separate YouTube channel I made, Curious Mammal. I really want to get back in and make more videos for that. Um, what I've been doing in the meantime is I've been dating guys. I've got a girlfriend who I really like, so that's really cool news for me. Um, but that was like a long process of dating a ton of people uh, to find somebody that uh, that really matched up well with me. So I'm really excited to have that done. And hopefully now I can have um, like more time to put into some of the other endeavors I do. But I want to get that other channel running. Um, and I also got a new job too, so I've got that, so I have less time. But I want to get some of my other projects running before I start draining myself by playing games. Um, however, uh, as I think a lot of you know, uh, this community is really important to me. Like, I still love the Dominions community. Um, and I still love Ill Winter, and I still love this game. It's, I still think it's like the best game that's been made. Um, and I want to stay part of it. Um, and what I have decided is that the, the time it takes to cast a game is pretty significant. Like in the tournament, Mare and I must have put in at least 200 hours so far. At least. At least. Because there's like the coordination time to sync up our schedules. There's the recordings that don't work we have to go back and do. There's the video editing and uploading. I mean, for me, it's maybe for Maryland, it's closer to like 150. For me, it's easily 250 probably hours. So... You know, it's a lot of effort to, like, cast these games still. Um, but, importantly, it's not emotionally draining, right? You're detached from the situation, you know, coalition uh, uh, or bad, you know, kind of rude or unfair diplomacy or whatever. You know, none of that's going to bother you like it would if you were a player. You can kind of sit there and laugh at it from a distance. So, I think until I get some other life objectives done that... Basically, we're going to be casting, uh, we're going to be doing two things. One is we're going to be casting games, and I've got a few cool games coming up. We've got the new casting thing, which is going to be going on. Um, we've got uh, another game that I'm going to be casting on the anti-dogpile map, um, and that's going to be really cool. We've got that, uh, that game's just starting out right now. Um... And then um, I've got another game that I'm casting with a particular Patreon member who I think is actually really good at this game. And we're doing just like a high-level uh, overview of this game. And it's going to be really cool. I won't surprise you. It'll be a surprise who that player is and what that game is. Um, but it's cool. Uh, and this is going to be like an overview kind of cast so that's going to be starting to probably get released, I don't know, in a month or two. Um, so those are the things we have coming up. The other thing that we have coming up is we're also going to be having some single-player games. And there's some kind of cool things about single-player games. Um, we can actually fight pretty high difficulty on the anti-dogpile map, because one of the, probably the most frustrating thing about fighting the AI is they all are eventually going to declare forever war against you. And you're going to have every single province on your border attacked by an infinite, like, never-ending horde of, of waves of garbage. And you can definitely, if you want to, like, just beat the AI, you can come up with some bless where you can have a few, you know, elite dudes that can kill that or thugs that can kill that. But if you want to play it kind of like you would play against, uh, you know, like with a Scales Nation, like, you can play Scales Nations in multiplayer. You don't need these cheese strats. And they can be strong, but you're going to have a harder time dividing those Scales armies up to have stuff everywhere to not take significant losses. So playing a map where you can't get dogpiled as much, where there's more choke points, less places for the AI to attack you, um, I think will make for a much better single player kind of playthrough experience. So we'll be doing some of that. Um, I've got a game coming up here with uh, like Somber's Warhammer mod. Uh, 
And we're going to be, I think the first faction here is going to be Vampiria. Um, so that'll happen. I might play some more of his factions in there. I might, you know, there's so many things in Hellenica I wanted to play. And uh, there's some more D factions that might be good. Um, I don't think I'm going to, I think that the single player games will probably be reserved for mod playthroughs. I'm not terribly interested in showing you guys single player vanilla stuff. The one exception might be, it might be fun to do another Lemuria single player game. I just love playing Lemuria. They're my favorite faction. Uh, they're so much fun to play. Um, and they also do pretty well against AI. So um, that's basically the direction the channel is going to turn. Uh, it's going to be more casting, um, less me actually playing multiplayer games. Um, I, I think that's going to keep me connected to the community. Um, hopefully I won't fall too far behind in terms of how good I am at the game, uh, since I'm going to be involved in, you know, keeping it fresh in my mind with casting. Um, but it's also not going to be as big of a time commitment from me. And most importantly, it's not going to drain my emotional energy and I'm not going to spend time thinking about all the games I'm casting. So, um, that's going to be basically the main direction of the channel going forward. Um... We might also, you know, we could put on some other games. I've kind of been playing some other games too, aside from Dominions. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's basically that. Um, the other thing I want to talk about... Oh, the, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about too was uh, the tournament finals. Uh, a lot of the games are starting to wrap up. I probably will be casting that. I'm not sure who the casting crew is going to be. Um, I'll, I'll sort through that. I'd like to kind of try to mix it up every year. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it this year, because when I first left, I was thinking I was kind of exiting gaming in general. And I kind of have. I really don't do that much gaming anymore. Um, and actually, I think I think I want to come back and talk about this a little bit, because some of you might be, you know, can identify with this, like you're in a similar situation. I feel like a lot of times, you know, people don't talk about it. Or if you do talk about it with people, it's people who don't really understand um, and I think I've had like my whole life a kind of, I don't know, an interesting relationship with gaming. And I expect it's the same with some of you. Um, but yeah, I think that like, there's some games that I can say for sure I was like addicted to. And I think like an example of that would be, uh, like Dota. So God, like War, uh, Warcraft 3 Dota, I played so much of that. And then when it came out as a standalone game, oh my God, I've wasted so many hours of my life playing that game. And that game, not only was I addicted to it, like I would stay up late at night doing it. Um, and I like b practically dream about it. It didn't make me happy, man. You like lose half the games. People on your team are nasty to you. Uh, but you still like the rush you get from doing it, you know, and it's so engaging. Like, it just uses all these different parts of your brain. Oh, man. Uh, and it's so fun when you're winning. So that game I was, like, I was definitely addicted to. I don't think, like, Dominions I was ever, like, addicted to. You know, which... Like, I... I don't sit around, like, wanting to play Dominions nonstop. Like, it's not the same thing. Like, I could literally play Dota for, like, eight hours a day if I wanted to. And if I want to quit, it's actually hard. Like, I, I, that shit is uninstalled from my computer, guys. We do not have Dota on here. Uh, it is, it's not allowed to be on here. Um, so, yeah. Um, that, so that was a definite, like, hard negative. Has to be, like, cut out of my life completely. Um, other games, though, they kind of, you know, in one way, they were a replacement from, like, living your real life, which I think is not cool. Um, like, everybody need like, first of all, games are interesting. Everybody needs things to, like, chill out and do and relax. So I think they have a place. But I think, like, Dominions, I was not addicted, but it just occupied such a huge part of my life. Um, and it had, it had taken so much of my energy that I really needed for doing other parts of my life. And furthermore, just like, you know, Dota, the, the a lot of the personal interactions were negative. I mean, hell, guys, in Dominions, first of all, you rarely win games, right? Because it's like a 12-person lobby and only one person wins. So you're losing most of the time. If you're lucky enough to win, you have to fight everybody else on the map, right? And 
potentially they're all not going to be happy with you. They're definitely not going to be happy with you if you're lying to them and deceiving them a lot. Um, so, you know, there's kind of a weird aspect where, you know, everybody has to, like, be very... It, I, what's actually weird is, like, the more veteran players tend to be less friendly a little bit. Like, they'll be trading a lot, but they're, like, always skeptical or, like, more distant, I've noticed. So, like... I mean, and that's not necessarily totally true, but I, I don't know. It's just, like... It kind of sucks that the people you're playing the game with a lot of times aren't going to be friendly with you. <laughs> you know, like, it would be way more fun if it was actually, like, I don't know. Like, you could be more friendly. Um, and so, I don't know. I kind of have a group of people I play with and will attack each other and stuff, but I don't know. I feel like it's more friendly a lot of times. So, and that part I really like, but I, I guess what I'm saying here is that when a large portion of your life is like a kind of stressful activity, which I think Dominions is, and that's like the good and the bad part of it, uh, I, I think it can kind of lead to depression in a bit. And I think it's, I think like for me, gaming and depression are definitely intertwined in that like the things that I did to kind of get out of the funk I was in was I started like going on a hike every single morning. Uh, I started going back to the gym. I made sure I was sleeping better. I quit gaming entirely for like, I don't know, like two or three months. I think three months, and then I started doing like a little bit of it. Like just casting. Now I play a few other things. And I, I think I might be doing a few other things too much. So I, I probably need to cut that back. But, um, yeah. Um, I, but the thing is, is those other things like, you know, dating, hanging out with family, uh, hiking, you know, doing work around the house. I've gotten, you know, I've completely redone my whole house, basically. Um, all those things bring joy and fulfillment. And a lot of times, like, gaming doesn't. So, I don't know. If you're if you're a bit drugged down and a little bit of a gaming... It's, it's not even really, like, a hard depression. For me, it was just, like, a comfortable, indif a comfortable indifference is the best way to describe it. I was, ha you know, comfortable. Things seemed kind of okay. But they kind of weren't, you know, like, thing. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do really in life. So, you know, if you're in that spot, I God, the best thing I can tell you is go get out in nature for like an hour every day. And that's probably like the best thing. And just cut all of the gaming out for a while and then add it back in as you see appropriate. But don't add in shit you're addicted to. Dota, I think, needs to stay off my computer for forever. Dominions, I can play an hour of and be done. Um, I can cast the game and be done. Um, but then, only do stuff if it's really making you happy. Um, so, yeah. And I think, you know, there's a word of caution there. Because, you know, I, I want to be very careful telling Dominions players only do stuff that makes you happy. And then we're going to have like a million sub requests. Because people are in late game Dominions and they're like, it's not making me happy. I mean, don't play if it doesn't make you happy. Don't Please don't sub out too much. <laughs> Though I did sub out of a couple games I was in when I pulled the plug. Uh, special thanks to Zan, who subbed in for me for most of those. Um, anyway, I think that's about it. I, um, I, You know, I know I had said some kind of mixed things when this was happening and starting. Like, I might be leaving. You know, this would be the last series I think I'd said about Bogarus. Um... And I didn't really want to do a channel update till I was really more sure how I felt. And so I'm glad that I waited. So uh, I'm probably going to be casting the tournament finals, which I'm looking forward to. We already have some really cool players in it. My boy Olio is in there. I love Olio. Um, there's also a bunch of other... Uh, Demonsthenes is in there. Um, I haven't looked through all the winners, but some of my boys are in there. So I'm really stoked to see how they all do. Um, and some of the really good players got eliminated. I think Arco got ganged up on at the beginning and killed. And I think Sai just didn't win uh, the game he was in. So um, some of the best players uh, are out. So we're not going to have a repeat winner. Um, but, um, but yeah, I'm still super looking forward to the tournament and seeing uh, how that plays out. I think that's it for the update, guys. Um, I just wanted to let you know what's going on with the channel, uh, what was going on with me a little bit. Um, I know there's probably a lot of sharing, but um, yeah, 
uh, I wish you all a great day and a great rest of, uh, of your week and take care.